Some Jehovah's Witnesses who originally opted for alternative service explain what personally convinced them that their service was actually under military control. A few days after we started alternative service, military officials from the enlistment office visited us. They would come directly into our rooms to check on us. They would ask the staff questions about our conduct and the different types of work we were assigned. Our schedule was not anything like the hospital staff schedule. Our schedule was more like a military soldier schedule. Let me tell you that our work started at 7 a.m. and ended at 11 p.m. We had approximately four hours in between to eat and rest. The military officers would come to see us, and they would tell us what to do. They were the ones who decided how much money we would receive, and they were to pay us themselves. The work we were assigned was difficult, but I did it gladly. The only reason why I refused this service was because it was military in nature. In addition to their Bible-trained consciences being offended by the military supervision, the witnesses' human rights were also violated by the punitive nature of the service. They were not permitted to leave their place of work, and they were kept under surveillance. In effect, their workplace became their prison. Yes, I was restricted to participate in my Christian meetings, where I worship my God which is very important to any one of Jehovah's Witnesses. We were forbidden to leave the premises after work. They explained that even if we tried, we would be convicted in court. The length of their alternative service was to be 42 months, in sharp contrast with the 24-month period for military service. Altogether, 22 conscientious objectors who are Jehovah's Witnesses felt impelled to discontinue their alternative service when it became apparent that it was under military supervision. All were prosecuted. Some were even charged with military desertion. Additionally, there are 45 other young witnesses who opted not to accept alternative service and are still in prison for their conscientious objection to military service. Based on Armenia's obligation to the Council of Europe to pardon all conscientious objectors sentenced to prison, Jehovah's Witnesses appeal for their immediate release. Furthermore, since the current law in Armenia keeps alternative labor service under military control and supervision, it remains an unacceptable option for future conscientious objectors among Jehovah's Witnesses. Therefore, until Armenia complies with its commitments to the Council of Europe, the issue of conscientious objection to military service will remain unresolved.